Welcome to Lifestyle Buzz Today with Orlando. Fresh, innovative, entertaining talk about topics we are all in one way or another involved with. And now, here's your host, Orlando Burgos. Well, hello, world, and okay, you sexy people, you. It's going to be another super hot day today, but I have the right solution for all of you. Okay, now, take pen and pencil, write it down. Stay home, be cool, and there's no better way than to be in cool than just to listen to your pal Orly here on Lifestyle Buzz. I swear to you, I know for a fact that uh, just the idea of tuning in will lower your home temperature by, uh, I don't know, 80 degrees maybe, I don't know. I, it's just coolness at its best, okay? I'm not a weatherman, so my figures might be off by a touch or so, so you know, I don't know. Anyway, there is, for the soccer fans, there's still one more game being played just about right now. And I happen to be missing it, guys. And you know my passion for the sport. But the fact is, is that Orly Bird would rather be here with the people I love than watching the game. <laughs> lie, lie, lie. Anyway, um, you you guys believe me, don't you? I mean, seriously, it sounds so sincere, at least in my headset. Um, but anyway, the passion of soccer is still alive and well. And although for us from the Latino world, our teams have gone home. Eh. So it's become a European Cup situation, which is just as good. I mean, there's always next time in, you know, four years from now. But... But for the Latino fans, we are already stocking our beer coolers and our barbecues and everything because America's Cup is coming to Brazil in September. And that is like, for us, that's the stepping stone for the next World Cup. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, we, we, just, uh, we just landed and we're getting ready to, for the you know, four years from now. Anyway... Um, I have to say one thing, and, and, and don't, don't think I'm being political or critical. Again, I always disclaim that Lifestyle Buzz is not a political show at all. But one of the things that I noticed was that prior to every game, both teams, they embrace each other, and everybody in the stadium sings the individual national anthems, uh, the flag is on the field, big time display, and everybody has a love for the game and the honor they bring to each nation. Why can we have the NFL recognize the fact that, listen, as compared to many places in the world, we in America really have a good time. We really have a nice we should be appreciative of what we have. And the least thing that we can do is, during the NFL, have the players stand up. I know about this baloney, about the freedom of speech and all that good stuff. Listen, this is not the right time to display that sort of nonsense, okay? Stand up. You don't want to sing, don't sing. You don't want to salute the flag, don't salute the flag. But stand, because... It's all about those who laid their lives on the line in order for these people to be able to be on the field performing their sport. Okay, so we'll be right back in a couple of seconds. Stay tuned. More to come. Don't go away. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit.
get. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. back and uh we were just talking about the fact that um hey stand up it doesn't hurt okay um which in a very nice kind of segue uh i was at the gym the other day and you know i'm 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 an old guy you know i am recovering from a huge accident that happened yeah maybe a couple years ago but I had so many broken bones that I was actually told I was going to be in a wheelchair. So I actually need to go to the gym and work out. I had broken knees. Consequently, uh, my legs don't work as well as they should. But they are getting better. Little by little. Little by little. Uh, I mean, I, have a, I had one rib go thro- right straight through my left lung. Uh, my hips are broken. You name it. I was a, I was a mess. So I go to the gym to kind of stretch it out best I can because, I mean, I, I do have limitations. Anyway, I was at one of these knee curling machines there. And this young gun comes over and sits right next to me and starts trying to rush me uh, through what I was doing. And, um, I mean, he is a likable guy. I mean, he wasn't being nasty or anything. But he kind of let me know that I was interfering with his beautiful bod regime and he needed to get to the beach. And that was the rush thing about it. So I sat there and I kind of, you know, you can't get mad about these things. I mean, people today have a different train of thought, especially the young. The young don't think that they will ever be old. And uh, which is surprising to me because, uh, (laughs) I mean, that's the routine that we are all accustomed to. Nobody stays uh, in perfect shape forever and ever. I was at one time uh, a good-looking guy and uh, very physical and strong and everything. Now I'm not. But I need to do what I need to do in order to keep my health alive. Uh, The young man kind of indicated that it would be so much better for everybody uh, if I went there late at night when these young guns were no longer at the gym. Yeah, So I asked him what his rush was, and that's when he told me that, um, I told him, I said, you know, are you in a hurry to get to your job, or what's the story? No, man, he says, I need to get to the beach, man, in his little twang. No, I said, is that where you work? Are you a lifeguard? No, man, I don't have a job. I'm only 22. I'm going for the fun. So I guess you have, you know, I I have to estimate that he was living with mom and dad if he has no means of uh, jobs or anything. I mean, how does he pay his bills? He had some of the fanciest gym outfits that you could see. I mean, like everything matched uh, little, from his little cap to his shiny shoes. Everything was like perfection and expensive perfection. So I assumed that mom and dad had a lot to do with it. And um, I mean, I, I just kind of had it with his arrogance. And uh, when he told me that he was 22 and not a job, I mentioned to him that when I was his age, I was already flying a fully loaded, fully weaponized F-4 Phantom in a war zone, getting my ass shot at. And that after that, raised a family, created a business, and, you know, I I went about my business of being an adult. And uh, funny enough, I thought that this was going to be a total turnoff for for the guy, and yet he kind of the grin kind of left his face, but he sat there trying to, never said anything, but he was expecting more. And uh, 
So I explained to him the fact that uh, the reason why I was slow is because I could only go so far on the fact that I'm in the healing process. I mean, for a young, old, for a young guy, it's a matter of weeks. For an older guy, it's a matter of years. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I noticed was that all of a sudden there was a sense of humanity about the kid and the fact that I don't know if he found that he was wrong and admitted it, which it, to me I have to give credit to whoever raised him because obviously it was good, good manners, good education. Anyway, I finished my workout, and funny enough, he stood in front of me counting my repetitions and kind of holding, touching the weight so that I wouldn't hurt myself. And I found that to be very touching, very nice, and I appreciate it very much. I thought that, uh, who knows, maybe I reached the young man in a positive way. It went from conflict to common ground in the in the space of that, that single interaction. You know what? I mean, it, you can never say, ah, you young fool. No, I was young and I was foolish at one time. And so you need to recognize that. And that's one of the things that happens today is that everything is a confrontation. Everything is a black or white, negative you know, no, nothing like that. At any rate, I, I, I finished my stuff. I thanked him for helping me. And I went to the parking lot, you know, while I was working to my car. Oh, the, one of the things that I had noticed was that a lot of his buddies were there around him. I guess he's, he's a popular guy in the gym. So a lot of his, like six young men, were there paying attention. And no, none of them ever said anything. I figured, okay, are they going to attack me or what? You know, but no, they were like all in the same outfits, all in the same body beautiful type of thing, you know. But one of them met me in the parking lot as I was working to my car, and all he said was, Jerry's a cool guy. And I said, oh, no, I know that. I mean, it's fine. And then he thanked me for my service. And um, I guess what his gesture was, what could pass for a, some kind of a salute, military salute, which, you know, I mean, it was the best he could do. And I appreciated it. And you know what? I think that's one of the things that we all should aim for is to try to be a positive influence in whatever it is that we do. Why get into a confrontation? Why try to be critical or negative about people's feelings? You always have to accept the fact that there's a difference of opinion, and that's what makes us human beings. And that's what makes us society. And that's what makes us be able to relate to each other, whether in a negative way or not, but not in a confrontational way. Me, I happen to be a war veteran. I have tasted the bad taste of that type of lifestyle. Um, I can say that I regret it. I was young was excitement. It was what I needed to do. I didn't do it out of joy. I did it out of the fact that uh, I it was my responsibility to do that. I had signed for the military, and uh, that's what the military is supposed to do. So I thank the young man for his words at the parking lot, and we all went our different ways. Hopefully, I did make a difference on these people as I hope to make some with you guys out there. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Lifestyle Buzz. Have you purchased a wine refrigerator or put a wine cellar in your home? Maybe you have a new wine rack. Great news, but what wines will you buy to stock your wine rack? Let me, Michael Horn, help. I'll find the wines for your wine cellar with your taste in mind. We'll determine what varietals, Cabernet, Pinot, Chardonnay, what types of wine, California, French, Italian, you like. We'll find you one-of-a-kind wines from all of our friends we interview daily on the What's Cooking Show and the What's Cooking on Wine Show. On a budget, 
we'll find you the best affordable wines. Want hard to get library wines? We can source those for you too. And if you need cigars, let LA Ram sports legend and iconic actor Fred Dreyer make your selections. Hey, we can even host a wine dinner for you or set up a sports cigar party with Fred. Call me, Michael Horn, at the What's Cooking Today Show. Call 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines of your lifetime. When you really want Italian food, you've got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club. Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Seekers of luscious and appetizing gustatorial pursuits indulge your fancies with steaks so absolutely yum yum. Vegetarians have forsaken kale and pilates and never look back. Fish specialties so fresh and delicious and chosen by King Neptune himself and relish Columbus Italian family specialties so delectable you'll be yelling out bravo, bravo. And let's not forget Columbus world famous meatballs and you've got to try their breakfast pizza. Oh, and jazz every night. Service that's friendly, not fawning, and at a price that'll keep you coming back. That's Columbo's. That little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Columbo's Manja. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. All right, we are back. And during the break, Mike and I were chatting here about the gym incident, and he had a very, very smart young guy perspective about uh, what went on and I'm going to let him talk about it. Well, Orlando, I just think that the gym becomes a very testosterone testosterone filled territory, especially if you like this young man you described, he's mm. probably there three, four times a week. Yeah. You know, just probably, he probably all his buddies hang out there. He's probably, he probably knows everybody at the gym at this point. He probably thinks it's his, his, his own gym. He considers it his territory. That's his it's, territory. Yeah, it's yeah. a very masculine act, you know, by working out and sweating and lifting weights and all that. And, you know, oftentimes when you think something's your territory, you become uh, far less sympathetic to others around you. And I think that once you uh, express yourself as being a, you know, former combat pilot, as well as, you know, recovering from a very, very serious accident, that kind of, he finally realized, you know, this is a community we're in right now. This isn't my house. And he right. gave you the empathy that, you know, every human deserves. The thing is, is that, you know what, in, in today's volatile, and, and I, I'm going to use that word, uh, it, it may not be a, apropos, but in reality, I see it as as that. It's, it's our our system here in America is volatile. People are always. It's like the people are very much on the defense all of the time, when all they sh- really should be doing is opening their ears and listening to what other people have to say. Yeah, is it because? In our society, we kind of close ourselves now to any no, kind of... No, not necessarily. I, this, well, this is my opinion, personally. This is just one man's take. I believe that it's the way that we Americans have been, especially male Americans, have been socialized through our media, the mm-hmm. way we grow up. I mean, just the media that we consumed as kids was all about this... Uh, uh, very, very, you know, individualistic, tough America, you know, be it the Westerns that we used to watch, right. the old war movies we used to watch, or the old gangster films. There's always a sense of a, of, of, a, of achievement through force, of achievement through dominance. And uh, that's, I think that's unique to the American experience. Also, I think we're a very young country. 
you know, we, we're not one of those European, you know, dynastic countries that have been around for 2,000 years where, you know, you develop a sense of a, a more civil sense, I think. But you know what? I have to tell you, I have to differ with you in Please. that regard because I happen to be from a Latino background. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because I was listening to a Hispanic station that originates in Mexico the other day. And the show has a p particular person there. Uh, he has a strange name. But anyway, his point of view is totally machistic. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about heavy-duty machistic, which is, is up to a point is very common in our countries. Okay, Although today it has been tempered some by the fact that females have equal rights and are more vocal. Yeah. Okay? My mom was the type of person that uh, whatever my dad said, that was it. Right or wrong, whether she liked it or not, black or gray, green or black, doesn't matter. My dad's choice was her choice. End of story. Boom. That's it. Um, today, forget it. It, is, it doesn't work like that. However, the male of the species in the majority of the cases is still that big chest beating boom 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 type of guy that doesn't let go by the fact that women have equal power equal rights um now here in america though that that equality has been whether people accept it or not that has been more prominent for more years than in most countries, young country. One of the things, though, and I'm going to ask you because you are a psychology. Sociologist. Sociologist, yeah. okay? My feeling. Okay. My feeling. There is a feminization of the American male that is going a little bit overboard. The American male today, like these kids at the gym, they were not there to work out. They were not there to be buffed. They were there to be pretty. Mm. <laughs> they were there to be attractive. Yeah. But you know what? Whether they happen to be heterosexual or gay or whatever, nobody cares. The fact is, is that they were over the top in, I mean, like I said, I'm an old guy. I go to the gym. I put my sweats on. I put a t-shirt on. I go there, get it all wet. That's it. These guys, they go there. As soon as there's a little wet stain, they go to the, the locker room and change their outfit. Well, yeah. Also, I think we need to realize that we're in Los Angeles as well. I mean, I think that the gym experience might be a little bit different if you're in Boise, Idaho, <laughs> compared to if you're in uh, Los Angeles, California. I'm sure many of these gentlemen might be aspiring actors. Maybe that's why they weren't uh, working. Well, we'll take it up after the break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic-T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. Do you 
you owe back taxes to the IRS? Newsflash, the president has changed the tax laws. And now, you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares. Plus, save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. When you really want Italian food, you've got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club. Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Seekers of luscious and appetizing gustatorial pursuits indulge your fancies with steaks so absolutely yum-yum. Vegetarians have forsaken kale and Pilates and never look back. Fish specialties so fresh and delicious and chosen by King Neptune himself and relish Columbus Italian family specialties. So delectable you'll be yelling out, bravo, bravo. And let's not forget Columbus world famous meatballs and you've got to try their breakfast pizza. Mm. Oh, and jazz every night. Service that's friendly, not fawning and at a price that'll keep you coming back. That's Columbo's, that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Columbo's Manja. All right, we are back. And Mike made a point here about vanity. So you say that uh, a lot of the... What happens, and let's refer back to the gym because, but, you know, to be vanity, I I mentioned the fact that I felt that there was an effemination of the American male. Yeah. You mentioned vanity in Los Angeles. Uh, I I have traveled throughout the, across the United States, and by being a member of the 24-hour fitness I, I try to make a point of going to all these cities, different cities, all across different states. And it seems to me that it's the same. So, yeah, v- vanity in the male has always been very present. Uh, I find it that, in like in this case, maybe it's a little bit over the top. I don't, I don't understand it. Vanity with males has always existed. Yeah. Mainly in the wearing of clothing, yeah, the way how you dress, manners, yeah, being a gentleman, yeah. That was also a, a, a that's an, ex- an example. It's a display of class, right? And that and that's uh, I'm using that word intentionally because it's you know has two meanings: class in terms of you know being a gentleman, but class in terms of also your wealth and status. Now, in sociology that you study, do you guys cover the idea that there's a vanishing? Yeah, class. that's, I mean, to be honest, Orlando, um, sociology is a female-dominated field. Mm-hmm. And so um, you got to be kind of careful what you say and what you ask. I mean, there's there's def- been definite theories about this. I have my own personal theory that um, 
because of the high divorce rate in this country, mm-hmm. because of uh, you know the break breakup of the traditional nuclear family in terms of child rearing, there's been a a whole generation and probably about two generations so far, maybe even three, that have been raised primarily by women, right? Whose fathers aren't around most of the time, uh, and so they pick up a lot of their you know, there the, a lot of attitudes about grooming and about vanity from women. And uh, women, right. you know, I think I, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say that women are more concerned about their appearance than men are, but I think that women are socialized to uh, be more concerned about their appearance than men are. Okay, so sociology, in my book, covers just that the circle of society. That involves males and females. Yeah. Okay. Now, being that one is top heavy now, fine. I, I, I get it. I get it. But what is the solution? It cannot be the way that males have to allow this to be a to become a matriarchal way of living. Yeah. I mean, which in a way it has because it's. It, it, it always has been up to a point, but males have always stood the ground of being males. I mean, it's not, it's not that you have to go around thumping, thumping your chest and beating your chest and grow, you know, making... Like grunting around and, and yeah, punching people left or and right. Like that, or punching your neighbor or, or anything like that. It doesn't have anything to do with that. What has happened, though, is that the male has actually stopped being male in the fact of being responsible, being grown up, being... No, it seems to me that now the male is more overly understanding of the soft side of life. Well, I think that the equality of, of wage earning has dramatically changed since World War II when you first had women enter the workforce in America at a large scale. Right. And I think for a long time men have considered their identity to be wage earners and uh, providers. Mm, okay. And as, w- as more women have uh, entered the workforce and as we, have, we haven't achieved it yet, but there is, you know, we're getting close to parity in wages between men and women in this country. It's still, right. I still, I think it's about 80 cents on the dollar for women. Uh, you know, women have uh, more input on the relationship, more input on the family because they're bringing more to the table now economically than they were ever before. All right. So, I mean, I, I for one... It's not that I'm not accepting of uh, of women domination. I mean, it, I'm not. Well, I think domination is a bad word. I would say. I would well, say. I, I, I'm trying to be more emphatic about okay. the difference. Okay, yeah. and uh, and I get it. I get it. I mean, the the fact is is that in my family, personally, my mom was a very strong person. My dad was also a very strong person. Mm-hmm. I come from a family unit where my dad was the earner my mom was a homebody my dad gave the raising of the kids to mom except when it came to discipline going out to the soccer field okay then then we became his boys you know type of thing um discipline no in my in my family oh my mom would say Wait till your dad gets home. Yeah, that was the scary thing. Oh. Was the scariest thing that, that, that someone was your, could say. And then my dad would pull me over, take me to the garage, and he would say, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Your mom is going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wait a minute. My mom just turned me over to you, and now you're returning to there. So where do I sit? The fact is, is that in that confusion grew my desire of understanding. You know, because one of the things that I was taught from young, which I don't see today, was I was given the privilege of being my own person Mm -hmm. and realizing what was going on in my lifetime. I think you're onto something there, Orlando. I think you're onto something, especially when it comes to the demasculization of males in America. I think that uh, children today, all children, um, are coddled far more. Uh-huh. Than, than you were and then I, even I was as, right. as children. And I think that, that that breeds a sense of insecurity. You'd think it would make, it would make you secure, feel more secure about yourself, 
but it does. It makes you feel more insecure because you haven't had that that experience as a kid of getting into trouble and getting yourself out of trouble of, of right. skinning your knee and still like you know getting up and walking away. There seems to be uh, just too much, uh, not enough autonomy for kids at a young age these days. You know, you know, that, I think that's uh, yeah, that's uh, the best way of putting it. And I was going to make a comment, but we're, we're against a hard break here. Um, we'll do it afterwards. Cause there's a great conversation going on. Um, ah, let's do it right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. All right, we were talking a little while ago about, you know, the social fi- fiber in families and maybe a little too much mollycoddling going on. And I'm going to close this little thing with a story. I came over here in 1958 as a kid, and um, we lived over a block away from the Exposition Park. And I didn't know anything, but I came from Costa Rica where I grew up out in the fields, climbing the trees, eating mangoes up on the trees. Um, I mean, just being a totally disorderly punk and whatnot. And uh, that was the way that I was allowed to be, to, uh, I was allowed to grow up by my parents. So when I came over here, the next day I woke up and uh, I needed to know where the heck I was. And uh, so I took a walk and I ended up at the, gr- at the uh, uh, Exposition Park, which is huge. At that time, there was no sports arena. It was just the Rose Garden, the museums. And the museums, you can go in there for free. So I took a hike. I went to the museums, both of them, the History Museum, the Science Museum. And uh, I walked around. And when I came out, it was already in the afternoon-ish, and I was totally lost. I couldn't figure out which way was to head to my house to save my soul. And my English was way, way, way too choppy to ask for directions. I could, you know, anyway. So my biggest concern was not of what where I was, that I was lost, was worrying about my mom. So anyway, um, it took a while, and finally, from a distance, I saw 
the lights of a gas station that I knew were right behind the house where we were at. And sure enough, I found it. I walked in. My dad was there, and he goes, where have you been? I mean, the, there was no outcry of, oh, my God, we were ready to call the cops. Or, or we're you, so glad you're home. We were yeah, so worried. Yeah, where were you? Your, you know, dinner was served half an hour ago. And uh, <laughs> I told him, I said, I, I just got lost in the park. Uh, how was it? Okay, fine. And that was the end of the conversation right there. How was it? What did you see? And we spent a lot of time talking about the beautiful things that I found in the park. Yeah. And uh, the next weekend, we all went again to, to, for me to show him what I saw. That is totally different than today. Today, parents are trying to hold way, way, way too tight to some of the kids. I mean, about exploring, about uh, getting their knees cuffed. And uh, I mean, uh, do you think that? Yeah, I think I, oh, for sure. I mean, you're, you're a hundred percent right. And I think that there's a reason. And I think that this touches on my other field of study, which is mass communications. Mm -hmm. I believe that because of the mass communications, cable TV, 24 hour news, now parents are seeing these horrible stories all the time right? of, you know, of child abduction. You know, there's a lot of, that was covered very, very heavily in the late seventies and early eighties. And then again, in the early nineties where you see these, you know, on Dateline NBC or on, you know, 48 Hours or on Unsolved Mysteries, there's all these terrible stories of children going missing. I think it probably can, you know, I think there's a, it goes back to when they first started putting missing children on milk cartons. All right. And that just, that was just so scary as a kid. It's like, oh my goodness, like, look at this. And, I, and so can you imagine how scary that would be for a parent? And so you're exposed to all these horror stories of child abduction and murder and mayhem and all that. And that's when I think really parents started to be, far more protective there's always protective parents you know always there's always are. one or two you know and that that was more of a uh, related to, to individual circumstances rather than the societal circumstances but i think now with mass communications and the american appetite for you know the this kind of crime drama stuff that that's what really started it so do you think that there's a need there's a need somehow it, 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 I would love to be able to find a formula that everybody will accept about bringing a l higher amount of reality to our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Step back, look at what's around you, be real. And also to be able to communicate with other people that we today... For one reason or another, it, you know what? I, I come from a different background altogether, and I, can never, I cannot say that I ever, ever, ever was not able to relate to anybody from this society here. Yeah. Although, you know, I, at one point I spoke nothing but Spanish, very little English. Uh, but it never really stopped me from being able to socialize well i think this goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the show about empathy about you know if you're if you have empathy in your heart then you have a far easier time relating to other people around you regardless of the fact of uh, verbal communication because you can still deploy that empathy in nonverbal communication it's, it's strange because you know i i had a german shepherd and for one reason or another friendly as all heck Okay, but if she came across a black person, she would growl. You had a racist dog. I, was, I had a racist dog. So it, this happened uh, in a neighborhood where we lived. Uh, we ran across this. And I go to the, the gentleman, black gentleman. I said, would you mind very much if I introduce you to my dog? Because I don't know if it's the color of your skin or the fact that She's an idiot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that the gentleman was very kind. Uh, oh, yeah. And she ca came over, socialized with Buffy, <laughs> and everything was fine. Yeah. So I'm going like, is it because she was caught off guard? She was by surprise by the tall man? I mean, who knows? The thing is, is that we were able to communicate the problem. Today, I find it a little bit different. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tricky one. All right, we'll be right back. Hi. 
Hi everyone, this is Fred Dreyer. You listen to me every week on the Sports Lounge. Well, I'm here to tell you my good friend and co-host, Michael Horn, is making his wine knowledge and his incredible industry contacts available to you. Mike will educate you in the world of wines. He will stock your wine cellar, wine refrigerator, or wine rack with one-of-a-kind wines. Also, as a lover of a great glass of port, I will share with you my experiences in finding the cigars that fit your palate. I will help you stock your humidor with great cigars that reflect your growing taste and the very best smokes for your budget. Mike and I can set up a once-in-a-lifetime wine dinner, and I can host a sports cigar party. Call us today at 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines and cigars of your lifetime. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Come on up on the beach hotel. Experience your home away from home, being beachfront at the Kanapali Beach Hotel. Begin your getaway, relax in on over 11 acres of tropical Hawaiian gardens at Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel. Voted Best Aloha Spirit by Hawaii Magazine readers. Just walking around the grounds with all the tropical vegetation, relaxing poolside, or kicking back in the sun on the world-renowned Kanapali Beach makes you feel like you're home in paradise. There's a package to fit all your needs. Wedding, honeymoon, activities, private parties, great food, or just good old beach fun. The hotel perpetuates the Hawaiian tradition at its best. Call 661-0011 or visit kbhmaui.com. And we have reached the closing segment of the show. Time flies so fast. Anyway, my words to you people out there is every single day that we raise up and walk amongst the beautiful earth can be a teaching moment and a learning moment. And I encourage people to keep their eyes open and ears open and minds wide open. And uh, you know what? Don't... Don't waste them. There's always people out there that need you, that would like to hear from you, and you should also be open enough to hear from them and, uh, you know, get to know them. So um, visit our website. I would appreciate it very much. Lifestylebuzz.today, www.lifestylebuzz.today. Or send me any messages or requests or whatever you need. Comments at lifestylebuzztoday at gmail.com. If you're interested in most, some of the travel programs that you'll find in the website too, uh, www.silverfoxexpeditions.online. www.silverfoxexpeditions.online. Or email us at silverfoxexpeditions at gmail dot com silver fox expeditions at gmail dot com and then the other popular site that we have which is really hitting very strong is www.babyboomergen.com it's not only for baby boomers I, 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 there's enough there for younger people that need to participate and uh, hope you guys can join us so email me at 
bboomergen at gmail.com, bboomergen at gmail.com. Or one of the things that you can actually do is go to our meetups, meetup.com, and you'll find me under Orlando Burgos, which is the travel company, and also the Baby Boomer uh, and more page right there. So you can join our groups. We are going to be having breakfast uh, meetings starting next month. And uh, hey, join us. You'll find it very interesting. Mike, last word. Well, uh, we were talking off the air that Croatia and uh, Russia are tied 1-1 right now in the Ooh. semifinal, and the winner of that pivotal match will face England in the finals. Yeah. And so uh, who do you like? Uh, who do you like? Who do you think is coming out of, of the Russia-Croatia match? And also, who do you, th- who do you got in the finals? Uh, you know what? I, I believe Croatia is going to go all the way, to be very honest. Have you ever been to Croatia before? No. It's beautiful. Is it? It's very beautiful. I, I, I read a lot about it. I In my travels, I don't do that region, yeah. so I stick very much to what it is. But I've been wanting to go because, I mean, their seafood is supposed to be. Yeah, beautiful food. beaches. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You wouldn't imagine, that, you know, because yeah. I deal a lot in the Caribbean, Cuba, Latin America, Costa Rica. But the, the rest of the world, I mean, is there's way way too much world to discover out there yeah and uh regardless of where you want to go at silver fox we can help you you and the best thing is that for my friends of lifestyle buzz i will give you wholesale pricing wow unbeatable unbeatable pricing nobody will make the travel any cheaper I can guarantee you that much. There you go. That's B- it. Book your trip now. That's it, man. Yeah, it's time to book. Um, SilverFoxExpeditions at gmail.com. Okay? And we have been brought to you by Lazy Dog Productions, LLC. Wishing you the best of the best. Stay cool. Don't overheat yourselves. And if you're drinking, don't drive. And if you're driving, don't drink. Don't drink. Hey, there you go, man. Mike the Philosopher, man. I gotta tell you, this guy is top-notch. So long. God bless.